I have finally received my contributor copy of Diabolic Press. Very nice. It's very nice. Mm-hmm. It's very nice. It's uh, pretty cool. Came out pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, I was just flipping through it before we started recording, and it seems pretty good quality. It, so far, as of this recording, it's not for sale yet, though. Yeah. Which, that's poop. I don't even know. I don't have a publication date for anyone. Not a publication date. Uh, a sale date. date. Yeah, release date. That's the thing I'm trying to say. Uh, but it looks pretty cool, and you can... Go to my Instagram if you want to look at it, I guess. At Caleb James 1986 my Instagram handle. Or you just go to at Diabolic Press on Instagram, and they also have it on there. Yep. So that's the first book of the month I've received. I'm hoping this week I will receive my copies of Horoscope 4 because they came in early. The, you know, corrected versions. Yeah. So I should be getting my box of books. And I'll be like, here's Even the, uh, the heart being in the hardback? I believe, yeah, this is my author copy. So, but you get a copy. Mm-hmm. You get a copy. Not you, Spencer. No. You got to pay. You pay. You pay extra for you it. You pay double. And then you double the double. And I get the I get the messed up one that doesn't even have the whole story in it. <laughs> and the, and, and, the then you have to, and then you have to buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for some reason, my name says it's just Carlos <laughs> instead of Caleb. Carlos. Uh, yeah, so that's what you get, Spencer. But. That should be uh soon, so hopefully I will, by the next book club, have some books to bring the show. Though, now that we have both been getting some different things in and stuff, and, like, a lot of these are, like, you know, the phys- physical magazines seem to be, like, well, I think we have to change what magazine is, like, you know... You it's know, not the, like the magazines, magazines of yeah, yeah. Like that you used to find on like the newspaper rack and stuff. Well... I mean, I, I, I like them. I think that actually kind of works being in, like, the smaller... You know, kind of. Well, it's not as flimsy. Yeah. Like when you get a magazine, you know, you think of magazines as flimsy or even like the better quality magazines. They're still floppy. Mm-hmm. This, like you can probably stand it up on a shelf. Yeah, you, yeah, you could probably put it, slide it in a book, you know, have it in a bookshelf. What I think constitutes a magazine is the variety. So mm-hmm. like an anthology is usually just stories and poems. This is mostly stories and poems, but Since like it has some art and stuff. In yeah, it too. this has art in it. Uh, magazines often have uh, reviews and like interviews, essays. essays, interviews. I don't know. I haven't read through. I only read one story in this book. So I just got it today. But it looks like one of these is a screenplay, maybe, oh. or like a play. Uh, I'm trying to find out what story that was. I just happened to notice because it had like the names and then you know they're what they're saying. Oh, okay. Like uh, the formatting of it. Yeah. Yeah, this one. What is the name of this? Or unless it's a like supposed to be a play inside of the thing, I don't know. But magazines, they sometimes like literary magazines. They'll have plays, screenplays, things like that. Um, so it's the variety that makes it a magazine, I guess. But it's pretty cool. Mm. I like it. I like that I could say I'm in a magazine too, not just an anthology right. or something like that. So that puts me at a couple anthologies. You know what though. Because I got into the, like, e-zines are different. I don't know what constitutes an e-zine other than just being online. But, I like, I got accepted by a Strange Day zine, and that's a print book. But I don't know, is that considered a magazine? Because that looks like an anthology to me. Right, yeah. Though, from just what I saw on Instagram, it kind of looks like the doll, by the diabolic press printing, kind of, like, the size and stuff. So maybe it's all, maybe it also just nowadays the magazines just considered what, like, the paper option. Yeah, okay. And the print option on. Yeah. So I remember when I was looking at, uh, I think it was on Lulu when I was thinking about doing the original short story collection for DPW. Mm. I was looking at the different options and they did have one that was just like called magazine. Mm. And it was like the the paper and the formatting. Well, not the formatting so much, just the cover and, you know, like the way it's set up. So I don't know. Maybe that's, that's I'm not a graphic designer. No. I'm not. I don't format books. I don't fucking give a hoot. But, uh. Yeah, folks, if you get a chance, check out Diabolic Press, issue number one. I like being in the first issue. Yeah, that's cool, too. Because it just saw on the off chance that it takes off and comes to the next Cemetery Dance. I was in the number one. Number one. Which costs $5 billion to buy on eBay. Uh, so anyway, today, what are we talking about? Uh, bookstores. Bookstores. And a bunch of other stuff unrelated to bookstores that lead up to bookstores. Probably should be a DBS episode, mm-hmm. but we can't have another one until mm-hmm. the 100th, so yeah. that's a special one. Anyway, folks, we'll check you out and... 27 minutes because I, I added extra intro music. Oh, nice. It's like a 27. There's a like, guitar riff mm-hmm. now. There's a there's a whole piano recital in the middle. 
drums, drum solo. And then also, I thought it was a little weird. I'm not going to name any names, but a certain friend of the podcast decided they're going to do a big spoken word monologue for our intro, uh. too, like right in the middle. So that music goes on forever. You are listening to the DPW podcast, the Drunken Pen Writing Podcast. I abbreviate, but it's not really abbreviated on the YouTube, I don't think. Mm. Regardless, I am your host, Caleb James. With me today, because five seconds ago he said it should be Columbus. So, (laughs) with me as always, Spencer, the Columbus Cum Collector Church. God, what's with you? (laughs) I couldn't think of a C. You threw a C name at me. Oh, there's so many things that begin with C, but then there's I told a... you this was the month of sperm for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till next week. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what are you doing? What are you collecting it for? Is it yours? Or... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's gonna definitely be mine. If I'm You're like... not getting other stuff. <laughs> no. Okay. You sure. Yeah. All right. I'm not doing any uh, comparisons. Oh boy, <laughs> it's a little raunchier one. Something my wife would have come up with. <laughs> you right? <laughs> For some reason, she's all innocent, doesn't say gross things, but then when we, any, the few times we've had her come up with a name for the show, like, she comes up here, and it's just the it, grossest. It's just, like, just dirty. And kind of mean. Yeah. Mean-spirited. Leading up to the discussion about bookstores, let's have a little review of the weekend. <laughs> okay. We won't go too far into it because it kind of was, some of it was poopy. Yeah. So we went to the Arnold Fitness Expo in Columbus over the weekend. My wife, Spencer Church, the, what was it called? I don't like saying it. <laughs> I, I don't like hearing it. <laughs> I don't like saying it. You should have picked something better. Uh, and myself, we went on a trip. We uh, booked an Airbnb. We're doing it right. Yeah. Like, All right, this will be okay. All right. Uh, things started off on a strange note. So I took Friday off of work and Monday off of work, which I'm glad I took today. Right. Uh, and you took the weekend off as well as Mindy. So we left. Uh, we we dropped our dog, Nitro, the, the jangler king here. Yeah. I don't know where he went. But, he's, he's over there. Uh, we dropped him off at a new boarding school because his old Jimmy Buffett-themed <laughs> uh kennel shut down they, just, they retired or whatever so this one he had to play with other dogs and he's like oh and he had you even had to do like a preliminary thing where they had to do a temperament test mm. he passed it minor humping but mm. he uh, had a good time it seemed uh so we took him there uh then like nine something in the morning we drove to columbus which is two and a half hours away from where we are we were like no nah, we won't do the arnold expo we'll just do saturday only yeah so friday we uh First thing we did, we went to the Loft Bookstore mm. uh, because me Spencer's never been there. I've been there a few times, and my wife hates bookstores, so mm. it was perfect that you yeah. go to a bookstore, you get lost at for uh, for hours. We'll circle back to that for the whole discussion of the yeah. episode. But to kind of recap the weekend, we did. I don't even remember. We did other stuff on Friday, yeah. didn't we? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we we went and had meals at some places. We went to it. It was uh the choices for some reason. Uh, we went and checked into our Airbnb, I think, and then we went to get food. And the choices were, it was like a a bag of nails or the uh, rusty bucket. Yeah. We went with the rusty bucket, and it wasn't great. No. Uh, we had overpriced, not such great meal. Okay, whatever. We ended up at a Kroger, and it was kind of yeah. janky. And I, th- I feel like we did something else, but it's not really that important. Uh, the Airbnb is fucking gross. Oh, the drive around the expensive mall. Yeah, we got fucking. It doesn't matter. None of that shit matters. It was. It was. You know, it was just a Friday of being in Columbus. All the actual stuff we planned on doing was Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. So first things first, the Airbnb. There was an odor. We were sitting on the couch, and I was like, "This is a fucking stench." <laughs> like you and Mindy don't have, I guess, don't have the sense of smell I do because in the slightest odor fucking just sets off well, alarms in my head. It has to be strong. For me, like it has to be like real strong for me to get it. Literally, just the faintest whiff from a mile away, and I smell it. I, I must be like part shark or something. <laughs> so I, or, hound. yeah, well, I guess that would be a better example. Sharks can smell blood. Mm. I can too. Mm. I made the mistake of lifting up the couch cushions 
And it was just rotten food underneath it yeah. galore. Like uh, French fries. There must have been a burger. I don't know. It, and it was the worst. That, like, you smelled it then. Yeah, yeah. It filled up the room. I was gagging. It was fucking gross. So we put the things over. And we ended up putting blankets from one of the separate. There's three rooms. We ended up putting uh, blankets from one of the rooms and draped it over the couch to kind of muffle the smell. Like stifle it. Then we examined the rest of the Airbnb, and I won't go into details, though there were medical bandages underneath my bed, <laughs> the actual <laughs> mattress, So, and we just left that there. Uh, but there was many things that were gross. Uh, fast forward a little bit, we decided to sleep in the very uncomfortable bed. Uh, think about the grossness, but we were tired from the drive and everything. All right, we'll sleep. As soon as we f- I start to fall asleep, the fucking dog place calls, the boarding thing. And they said, oh, your dog broke a nail. You have to pick him up immediately. It's like, we can't. We're in fucking Columbus. And then they were like, well, what about your emergency contact? And it was like, maybe, but, you know, it was a bunch of phone tag. We kept calling them. And eventually what happened was we had to get up at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and drive all oh. the way back to Washington. The, our emergency contact, which was just our old neighbor, luckily she was about to go to bed. So she was able to get... The dog, she was able to pick up Nitro, and we had to pick it up, uh, him up from her, and went home. Mindy decided she, all right, fuck it. You know, I, I struck out. She was yeah. just going to stay here with the dog for the weekend. Me and you made the wise decision <laughs> to get three hours of sleep, wake up at, yeah. before six, and yeah. drive back. And uh, the weather was pretty shitty on the way there on Friday, but it was just Silent Hill fog. <laughs> yeah. Like, you couldn't see anything from where we live all the way to Columbus. I don't know what was happening. So that wasn't the most pleasant thing. We didn't go to the Airbnb straight away. We went no. just right to the convention because we paid extra for the early pass right. tickets. So we were going to fucking use them. <laughs> yeah. So skip around a little. We we got to experience the expo. It was yeah. pretty fun. It was all right. I mean. We were just, I think you and me just won't quite in the right mindset to probably enjoy it as much yeah probably just because of everything that happened we were exhausted i we i mean even you tried a bunch of pre-workouts yeah like we were just trying drinks and stuff to stay awake uh we did try a bunch of machines and stuff they had there and lifted stuff and you know it was fun for what it was but like we didn't it fills in fast too. you mm-hmm. get like eighty thousand people in the fucking place so we got to see some celebrities or pseudo yeah, celebrities. We did get the points where we were trying to walk to places and we would just hit a wall of people where they were just yeah. standing because there was no room for anybody to stand and it would just it got very it, frustrating it, yeah. at times. It it got very annoying, but we probably spent half the day there, but well, too prob- long. Yeah, probably. Uh, but we got and we got to see some like Muay Thai fighting and stuff, or it was like. Yeah, it was a uh, tie boxing, something like that. People yeah, getting, like people getting kicked in the head and stuff. And we saw different bodybuilders and lifting events, and so we got to experience it a little bit. Um, again, exhaustion, and then we walked around Columbus for fifty miles. <laughs> reasons I don't want to get into, and then we uh, random did some shitty bar hopping. Again, not really our idea. We were with a buddy who wanted to. We ended up at an arcade bar. That was kind of a dud. And then we're like, all right, it's like five o'clock. Me and Spencer are going to die. Yeah. So we go back to the Airbnb <laughs> for a, a kind of a, a shitty night of just playing on our phones and not doing anything. Yeah, which we're at this time. Which they were supposed to send a cleaner while we were yeah, gone. Never happened. Didn't touch it. If they showed up at all. And had the gall to tell us that when we checked out after plenty multiple times that we should uh, make sure to change the garbage, garbage. and take the garbage take out. Take the garbage out. Which we did. But we shouldn't have had to. Apparently, we they waived the cleaning fee. So I should get 30 bucks back for the cleaning fee. I forgot to check that. But. What cleaning fee? For, for sending those people? <laughs> Wait, they were going to fucking charge us for that? Yeah. And a bookshelf fell down randomly. I don't know if that was what it was about. Uh, but it's it wasn't the greatest. Uh, the next On Sunday morning, we woke up and we went to the Rogue Factory, which I thought was pretty fun. We tried mm. a bunch of random shit. If you go to our, our Instagrams, I think we had a short video. Yeah. Some some of the things we were lifting. So at least it wasn't a total wash. And then uh, we were tired, so we just drove back. And uh, it wasn't everything it could have been. Things didn't go as planned. Oh, and Mindy got COVID, by the way. Yeah. So even if she went, she probably wouldn't have enjoyed it. No, yeah. Because she's sick as a dog right now, and we have to avoid her. <laughs> Could you imagine her walking around the arm? Oh, my COVID? God, yeah. I don't feel good. Just r- slowly getting worse. You literally just be dragging away the foot through the thing. Yeah. So uh, that that was kind of a disappointment. But anyway, 
Going back to the very first day, which I thought was probably, you know, successful for us was uh, we went to the Loft Bookstore. I've been there a couple of times. You've never been there. No. It's a huge bookstore, and it's like a maze. It is. Multi-floor maze. So the topic of the episode is what would your ideal bookstore be, whether you ran it or you just like somebody, like say I was opening a bookstore. What do you think I would do to make a good bookstore? Because your one complaint was, you know, I mean, they do give you a map, but it's like there's so much, and the way things are, there's not a lot of room. It's just like little aisles and stuff, and it's hard to find shit. Mm-hmm. So what would your ideal uh, bookstore be? See, I was kind of thinking about this because I was trying to figure out, like, would I just want it to be, like, one massive just floor layout or, like, multi have, floor. have, like, the multi-floor thing going on? And budget, there's, there's yeah, it's just you know dream scenario. Yeah, um, I I kind of like the multi floor kind of like idea because then you that also can you can like separate because like that's like kind of how they did some of it like like there was like like a lot of kids and like comic stuff down on the bottom floor and like they kind of did it like that way. It was like in rooms, so you had a YA room, you yeah, had a graphic novel room, which is nice too because then like you go to that side of the building and there's not a lot of people because that's not what they're shopping mm-hmm. for. Uh, but the again the the counterpoint is the general fiction section and then the genre fiction section, which are all kind of in the same areas, are very congested. Yeah, and also I don't feel like they were that big, yeah. like. If like anything, there wasn't like a huge horror section or like, you, know, like, you yeah. know what I mean? But if anything, I feel like like how the manga section was a pretty big open room. Mm-hmm. That should be like the general fiction section, right? Like a big yeah. open room because that's what probably most people are buying. Yeah, because I was going to say because like there would be like if anybody that was in a wheelchair or had like they wouldn't have been able to go anywhere past the the, the ground floor. Yeah, I guess I didn't even think of that. Uh, if you're a handicapped in any kind of way, you're not getting around. Even if for some reason you were able to get up there, you wouldn't have been able to really, go, like, no one would be able to go around you well, because there's literally just hallways. Well, I don't even think, like, a wheelchair would have been able to fit through some of those hallways. No. No, especially some of the side ones. I never thought of that, so I guess that's not really a handicap-friendly pay, uh, place. But I'm sure the staff would just get you oh, what you oh, need. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. But just, you know, that's part of the fun is going around and looking yeah. for some, you know, looking for things. But if I was... Uh, so, like, definitely if you if you go that multi-floor route, you need, like, ramps or elevators or something like that. But if I was a Columbus resident, I'd be there all the time because one has a cafe, like, right next, do- mm-hmm. next door, which is a cool cafe. And then two is just, like, they had a lot of sales. Like, every time I've ever been there, no matter what, I don't think I've ever bought a full price book. Yeah, even if it's, like, because even the ones, like, I got will, like, at least, like, you 5% off or something. You yeah. know, something, like. And then they just have, like, cool merch and stuff. To, if anything, it's just, like, too much stuff. Yeah. I was almost thinking about b- grabbing one of those shirts, but just yeah. never get, just didn't, didn't do it. What I would like to do if I had the option of opening up a bookstore would be a bookstore speakeasy. Mm. So I would have, like, a secret, separate section where not a full bar because I feel like that's just asking for trouble, mm-hmm. but almost like a gentleman's room. I wouldn't, you know, actually have it as just a gentleman's only room, but like a gentleman's whiskey lounge or something. Maybe, maybe like have it have that theme, but you're not actually selling alcohol. Like that could be almost like yeah. the cafe kind. Like, you well, know it what could I mean? be like BYOB because mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not spending $80,000 or whatever the fuck to get a liquor license anyway. But if you had like the speakeasy, uh, it would be cool because then you'd have a separate room, like behind a bookshelf, yeah. which we've actually seen in person, which is really neat. Uh, but then that's where you can do events. Mm-hmm. Like you can have, even if you had a small bar, but then a stage, you do poetry readings, story readings, you could have stand up comedy, you could actually have events and make it a place. Be honest, most places, bookstores aren't going to do well just mm-hmm. as a bookstore. Right. That's why a lot of bookstores have cafes attached and things to get the people in. Or, or just even like, even like Bond and Noble, like they have the cafe, like you were saying, but they also have like, you get toys there, you Pokemon cards, stuffed animals. Like, you know what I mean? They have At least 40% DVD. of the store is not books at yeah. all, if, if not more. And depending on the Barnes & Noble, but I think that would be cool. As far as bookstore layout, I do like the multi-level, uh, at least two floors, but... I would see. I like the I, I like how the loft separates. Like here's manga in its own room, mm-hmm. and here's things like it wouldn't have to be that large of a building. I wouldn't want the narrow hallways. I'm trying to think of some of the other places we've been to, like that Phantoms of the Attic comic book shop we went to. Like that's kind of a cool modern layout, as it's just like a big room. 
But at the same time, you can't fit as much. Yeah, there's like there's not a lot of room up there. Yeah, so that wouldn't really work ideally for a bookstore. Because you have to remember too, like now you're thinking about like, okay, well, the more room, like the more levels I have, the more exits, the more stealing. Right. Yeah. Uh, the more people could just like put shit in their pants, and you wouldn't be able to catch them. It's like that loft. It's so big. It's such a maze. And the amount of people in there at any given time, it's like you could probably get away with stealing fairly easy, I would mm-hmm. think. I mean, like I said, they have more than just books. So, you know, while it's not the easiest to put a book in your pants, like a pair of socks mm-hmm. or, a, you know, some of the weird different toys. There's like a lot of toys and stuff in one area. So I, I could see people jacking, jacking your shop. Jacking their shit. Maybe we'll open the drunken pen writing bookstore. Mm, yeah. Booksellers. Yes. Bookshop. Mm. Bookshop would probably be the best. Yeah. Uh, I think, though, you definitely would have to have, like, a modernized room where it's just, like, digital stuff. Like, you know, maybe, like, a media center. I wouldn't be – like, I probably wouldn't sell DVDs or stuff like that. But I'm talking about, like, uh, almost like when you go to, like, tattoo shops or different places that got, like, the couches and mm. some – TVs and different things. Again, just like a recreational area. Well, like Bond, Bond and Noble used to have like chairs and stuff around, right? Where you could they just put like it on the outskirts. Oh, okay. So they still have them, but yeah, they're always off. And like, if you look in the areas where no one's, which makes sense, like don't put them in busy areas. But there are uh, Barnes and Noble still that I've been to where, say it's like the horror section, they'll have like a nice mm-hmm. chair just in there, like, you know, off to the side that you can just sit and read. One thing I would like to have, like, I would at least like to have a section of where it's like, you know, used or almost kind of like the half price kind of deal mm-hmm. to where like, you know, we have like, you know, all this new stuff and stuff like that, but we also have this section of like either stuff that might be a little bit cheaper because it's just like people who maybe trade something in or, you know, you got like, Somebody trade something in, but it's something nice, like yeah. an older, nicer, like first edition of something or like a cool cover edition or something like that. That was the thing about the loft. Out of the hundreds of thousands of books they had, it just seemed like they were all new books. Yeah. That's because that, like, that's what I was the, the way you were describing it before. Like, that's what I was kind of, th- I was thinking, like, oh, they probably have some new stuff, but I was, like, I I was expecting, like, like a lot they, of uh, older, like, kind of, you know, kind of stuff. Like Caliban. Yeah. It's, like, mostly used stuff. No, it wasn't like that. I like Caliban. I mean, it's just a small used bookstore, but they have the downstairs for the mm-hmm. pulp stuff. and We should, paper. we got to go back there uh, sometime soon. Yeah, we definitely do. Just not walk across the entire length of pittsburgh to get there no that's that's not preferable that was dumb that was really stupid i didn't think it was that long but it was that one we went to in ann arbor I can't. oh the litter literati the, yeah literati i like that they had the staff recommendations on mm-hmm. a lot of the books and stuff yeah i like when things do when when like there's things like that it's almost kind of like the old like uh like dvd mm-hmm. rentals place you know you'd have the staff picks and stuff like that and they had an upstairs and downstairs mm-hmm. uh though the downs the, i liked that they had a typewriter you could like test out well they had an upstairs downstairs and like a basement right maybe i know that well whatever the basement was that's where the typewriter yeah. was uh the only problem with that is and i guess it's just with most bookstores like that it was just like oh this is like the photography art books and you know stuff like that so it's not like no one's ever down there but I always like the idea of like the dungeon, you know, mm-hmm. like the bookstore dungeon where you have a room that's just like I would probably do like rare books. Like right, you, yeah. you couldn't just like people just can't go down there. They would have to either have somebody go with them or, you know, you have to sign in and get yeah. like a, a lock or a key for the lock or something. But then just have like rare books and uh, hard to get books. Yeah. Half price books. They always have like the glass shelves and you have to ask somebody if you want to look at one of the rare books. But I like the idea of a whole room. Of course, you could always go theme too, which probably go like along the lines more of a comic shop. I'm trying to think like some of the other bookstores because we usually try to go to a bookstore every city we go to. Yeah, did we go to one in Cleveland? We, I think we went to a comic shop, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I don't think we really had time there. There was any like one like close by. Mm. Either, either the times we went to Cleveland, it's a it's a hard line that you have to set like with a bookstore too because like the loft i feel like it's too much mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I it's always, a little overwhelming i always buy something there but then like i see so many cool things and then you always end up talking yourself out of oh i'm not gonna get this because i'm gonna get that and then it's like it's too much and sometimes you just like get overwhelmed and just don't buy anything mm-hmm. uh, well it's like i was having trouble finding some stuff because like i was like i was trying to look for stuff but then couldn't like you know what i mean yeah. like but yeah but I, you know i was able to find a couple things but 
And then some bookstores are too sparse where it's just like, oh, we have this section of some newer books and then a couple shelves here of this stuff. And it's just like, eh, they, you don't spend a lot of time in there. So that's no good either. I want, I do want to go to that white whale in Pittsburgh because they, they I think they have a cafe inside the bookstore. But that's it's like, from what I remember seeing, just walking past it, it looked like it was pretty cool. Hmm. But I think a, probably a used bookstore is a better idea just for the fact that like books cost a lot of money. Mm hmm. And unless you're going to have sales, I don't think you're going to get a lot of business. That's why I said, like, you need something that's going to get people in for entertainment reasons. So I think, like, the big thing if you're going to have a bookstore is have it so during just, like, regular operating hours, yeah, it's just a bookstore maybe, but have a lot of events. Like, you know, live music and, you know, maybe have some, but not catered food, but if you have, like, a friend or something who does baking or desserts or whatever, you know, you know, you got a buddy that runs a pizza shop. They have stuff like that. Uh, obviously, book clubs mm. are one that most bookstores have. Signings. Signings is a big one if you have a lot of signings. I'm trying to think like like a Collins method. Like he has probably one of the best comic shops, the Pittsburgh Comics yeah. that I've been to. Because we've been to a bunch of comic shops. But, I mean, he has live signings sometimes. Obviously, he does a free comic book day. But he seems like he gets a good bit of business in there all the mm. time even though it's not a place people can walk to it's not in a downtown hub it's like almost yeah. like a suburb type of like a uh, set, setting where you have well, to drive to get there well he uh one thing that he does have which is something you'd have to think about with your store too is that it has its own parking that's a big deal a parking well, that's a problem with a lot of bookstores including the loft fucking on street parking like, you have to find somewhere where you have to park and walk like sometimes that's, that'll deter people just from going mm-hmm like, yeah, so having your own parking lot, that that's a better idea if you could just have, like, a storefront and it's just the actual, some kind of parking setup. Yeah, at least it's something. Well, like, that building was for sale right next to our gym, and they have a back parking lot, and I thought that would make a really cool bookstore. Mm -hmm. But I think it was, like, a refurbished law office or something. It was like, ah, no one in this area has, uh, they can't read. No mm -hmm. one can read. It's like, you have a bookstore, it'll fail, no one will go to it. Well, we haven't had a bookstore in this town for almost, like, a decade. Yeah. Yeah, even the mass chain bookstores like Borders or so they always shut down. So, but we definitely need to go to more bookstores, Spencer. More bookstores, bookshops. Like I said, we should uh, now that the weather's starting to get better, we should try to figure out maybe a Caliban and what did you say, White Well? White Well, that's a downtown, I think, or maybe the Strip District. So that one shouldn't be too hard to. No, what we would need to do. Uh, when we go to these bookstores, it's not just go to them as bookstores, preferably find like the event they're doing. Mm. So you know, we go to white, especially if we go to like the white whale, I think, I think that's what it's called. Uh, like find when they're doing like an author signing or cause they, they always do events from what I saw online. If you could get a, like, that'd be a good reason to go. Cause like, mm. okay, I'm going to go check out the bookstore, but then I'm also going to be involved in something. Versus us just like well, you're looking at stuff, mm. looking at stuff. Because uh, like they would go to fucking Barnes and Noble for that. Yeah, yeah. You probably pay. Man, well, I don't know. Barnes and Noble is kind of expensive. Since they fucking shit the bed with their new, car. like, why be even be a member anymore? Right. We have a free program, and you don't get barely any discount. I don't even know if you get a discount now. It's uh it's the if you you spend some like you know like, I think it's like that you spend like a hundred dollars, you get ten bucks back, kind of thing. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. Fuck you, Barnes no, and Noble. No more free shipping. No, more, you know that's if you want to pay for the, the extra options. Yeah, I hope they got a business. Oh, fuck them. Fuck them. I hope nobody reads books ever again. And like that sucks because like it's like I tried to get stuff from like Barnes and Noble because like I just don't want to keep on giving Jeff Bezos <laughs> like more of my money when I don't have to. But like they they're not making it easy on themselves. No. And Amazon's all, uh, almost always cheaper. And, right. And yeah. Usually you get the book faster. Yeah. It sucks because there's times where I bought like a 50 or $60 special edition book at Barnes and Noble. And I look online, it's like 30. Mm. Oh, fuck. Oh, uh, anyway, I don't want to talk about bookstores anymore. So let's talk about butts. <laughs> You're sick. You're, You're sick. Uh, so that was the Drunk and Pen Writing Podcast. We're still exhausted. We went to the gym today for some reason, too. You got a decent workout, in. Yeah, it was all right, but now I'm tired. Uh, so anyway, folks, if you want to check out... What are we checking out? Our Instagram and stuff? Instagrams. X. X. Facebook. I only post the podcast on X. I don't use it for anything else now. Same with Facebook, really. Yeah. 
And Instagram, I barely do anything. I, I fucking don't use social media. But if you really want to see what we're doing, you can go to at DPW Podcast. Mainly, you can go on there and just find us, I guess. Because mm-hmm. we're probably tagged and stuff. Uh, you could check out Spencer. You have an OnlyFans, right? Mm. You can go to CalebJamesK.com because I will be updating. See, I want to put the Diabolic Press as you know, my latest publication because mm. I got the book. But like I said, it's not for sale yet. Right, so, so that makes I don't it have anything little... to link to. I feel like that makes me look like a jackass. Uh, so hopefully he, uh, Mitch gets on uh, selling the shit. Yeah. Because yeah. people have been asking about yeah, it. They want to buy it. Yeah. yeah, I want a copy. The only thing I can think of is he just wanted to, the contributors get their all their copies first. So I think there's only like 11 people involved in it, so it shouldn't be too much. But some of them I know, like one girl, she's from one lady's from Scotland. So I was like, that's probably Ooh, yeah. a fucking nightmare. That's going to take a while. I sent her a picture of uh, the cover and her story. and was like, hey, because she was in Horoscope, and I found out she was in this, and uh, we were talking about it. And I was like, because at first we were like, because, you know, new, it was a brand new magazine. It was like, is it real? Mm-hmm. So like, are they just going to steal our stories? I saw, I sent her pictures like, hey, it's real. I got it. So, you know, rejoice. You, I mean, I don't know if you'll get it, but you, at least, you know, you exist in this print. Uh, so you could, uh, do all that. And we'd really, Caleb would appreciate it. I don't know about Spencer. Uh, what Spencer would appreciate if you'd go to his OnlyFans at the Columbus Cum Collector. Church uh, could have used another C verb that's worse than collecting. Oh yeah, there's they're out there. I let the fans use their imagination. Uh, so anyway, we thank you for listening. Not next week, but I think March 18th we have a guest. Oh, do we? Let me see who that is. It's uh, I think it's another saggy meniscus person. Oh, I do think I remember you mentioning something. I just don't think I remember hearing an actual like date recording date. Yeah, March eighteenth, CJ Spataro. I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. And her book looked really interesting. I'll have to go back and check it out. But yeah, so keep an eye out or an ear out, I guess, for that one. Uh, RK Bookshop. We're interviewing a bunch of more people this week too. So I guess look for that. I don't know when he, like his scheduling, like Bryce's. Like does I don't know if he just posts like the videos and stuff for the interviews like a week after they come out or because it's like the the publishing's always different because he publishes an episode every other Monday mm-hmm. but then if we have like an interview or something I don't know if he tries to always get that on the in between week or if he coordinates with the people because sometimes he wants the people to say hey let me know a week in advance mm-hmm. that way we can coordinate and do promotions and stuff so uh, that's too much work for me. Yeah, I edit and fucking schedule like the day before. <laughs> I think that's good. That's done. Get out there. Uh, so thank you for listening. We'll check you out next week. Bryce, what are you doing? Trying to, you know, game. (laughs) What? This game is really hard. Pac-Man? Uh, yeah. Dude, you're supposed to be playing the game for next week's episode of Arcade Bookshop. I mean... (sighs) I will. I'm really close to beating this. Right. And what about the book? Huh? We're supposed to finish a book for the podcast, too? Oh, yeah. I finished that last week. Yes! Oh, did you finally beat it? Uh Uh-huh. The first level. Oh, boy. You can listen to new episodes of Arcade Bookshop every other Monday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you get your pods. You'll always find us with a controller in one hand and a book in the other. Hey Caleb, you wanted to see me? Ah, Spencer, my good fellow. I've been expecting you. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. So, did you want something or... Want? Goodness, no. Require. Require? Yes. I require your services for the briefest of moments. Okay. Surely you can see the predicament I'm in. Well, actually, no, I can't. I lost my glasses at the pub last night. A pub, you say? Surely you can't be serious. As serious as a fought during a recto, because I am. And stop calling me Shirley. right to Anyway, if your spectacles were affixed upon your face, you'd see that I, the host of the most prodigious writing and books podcast in the business, has been immobilized by a rather substantial stack of fallen folios. What? My to-read pile finally fell on me while I was taking a nap. But you're on a podcast table. I hardly see how that matters. And you're naked! I hardly see how that matters. Dude, your hairy ass is touching my drink coaster. I hardly see how that matters. It matters to me! Can you just unbury me? No way. Your reckless reading got you into this mess. Blockhead! Wait! Don't go! There's a copy of War and Peace wedged in my taint! Spencer! Can you at least leave me a bottle of whiskey? Hello? Can't get enough drunken nonsense? Listen to new episodes of the Drunken Pen Writing Podcast every Tuesday wherever you get your pods.